Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. So great to see Hello. you. So uh, we have uh, Mira from Matahakas. Y'all have matching shirts. I'm very, very jealous. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Melanie from uh, Formaloy and Perceive the Shirts. Hi, <laughs> Melanie. And Lindsay there. Hi, how are you doing? I am great. How are you? It's good to see all of your faces. I've missed you. <laughs> yeah, I miss you guys. Hi. She's got the best Zoom background, the na au, au natural background. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm on an alien world and I'm I'm in front of the Stargate actually, so that's quite funny. <laughs> I love I that. <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to get together real quick because I miss you guys and we've been social distancing for about nine or ten weeks now, which is very incredible. But um, yeah, I just wanted to check in with you and see how you're doing and how you know COVID's affected your your business or your company business and what you're doing these days to keep on top of everything, to keep the spirits high and all that. Mara I, and I had talked really early on about shifting strategies, right, for COVID and we started to partner. Um, you could talk more about that for Matter Hackers because you guys are still doing some just incredible stuff with PPE mm -hmm. production. Um, and I think from, I was kind of in that same boat at first where like, okay, let's, you know, let's help, let's use our printers, let's look at the application. And, um, and I think what, and that's been going great, um, partnering with Stratasys on their COVID coalition. And, and I just, and also I was finding a lot of private companies and, and hospitals who were having a hard time getting PPE. So it was great to kind of fulfill that. Uh, void for them and and help them go back to work safe uh, and then and that's really what's been in my head lately is going back to work you know we've been we've been working in a limited capacity but now we'd like to do more and bring more people back and how do we do that safe safely and what do we need to do and and how what's our strategy going to be it's like we have to rethink everything um how we do everything with work and not only how you know how we live how we're living how we're getting our groceries but but then how do we go back to work so um i would i definitely want to hear from you guys on you know how are how are you handling some of those challenges has how is strategy for you and and how how have you felt about bringing people back to work as more people come back to work eliana or uh, Nominate yeah, Melanie well, for that one. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Mira. No, no, no. I nominate Melanie for that one. She's got she's, <laughs> she's got the most going on with that. Hey, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. So uh, we are actually starting to bring more employees back on Monday. So this is a, a pretty timely topic. Uh, at least in San Diego County, they're they're slowly allowing the reopening of more businesses and offices. And they've put together a template for businesses to fill out where we indicate the measures that we're taking to protect uh, our employees and our customers. And they give, uh, you know, suggestions and guidelines. And then, of course, there's the rules of, of things that must be done. So, um, and there's basically a, a summary of that plan that you post by your front door. So anyone that comes in uh, knows what the plan is and can abide by the, basically, the, the new rules for the facility. Uh, so we will be doing things like requiring masks for all of our employees and our production area will require masks and gloves since there's more common touch points there. Uh, certainly extra cleaning and uh, we will ask that employees clean up, you know, after themselves, you know, anytime that they, they basically touch anything. And then some of the common areas will be closed. So we used to like to bring together, have snacks together, have coffee together. Um, so we'll unfortunately have to hold off on doing those things for now, but I think that, um, you know, people are so excited about getting back to work and, and even be able to say hello to their coworkers face to face. Um, we can do without the, uh, you know, the, the food in the, in the community areas for the time being, if it keeps us safe. Thank you. For Matter Hackers, um, we, you know, our warehouses have been open this whole time. 
Um, so it, that, that has not changed except for the fact that it's changed completely. Um, we actually have a new, in the third week of quarantine, we moved our office. Um, so our Southern California warehouse um, is, we're now in a new location and it's massive. Um, so, which works really well for, you know, the times now because everybody is able to really spread out. Um, masks, gloves, uh, the whole time, of course, uh, lots of hand sanitizer for when you're coming, coming or going, uh, taking off your gloves. Um, and a couple of people have gone into the office here and there, but for the most part, we've been um, shelter in place and, and we have uh, all of our sales staff, our customer support staff, and our tech support staff have all been working from home. Um, and that'll continue until, you know, the, our counties you know, decide that it's, that it is, it is safe. Um, for the PPE efforts, um, we have kind of all of our shields and everything that have been donated that we're um, assembling and, and shipping out um, in that massive warehouse. So I've gone in a couple of times and it's only been maybe two of us at a time, um, just doing that unpacking of the donation, the donated 3D printed visors and repackaging them for, for hospitals. Um, so yeah, so I think we're, we've been pretty successful with working from home at this point. Um, so until it's, until it is needed, we'll probably continue that. Yeah. And we've been working from home as well for like nine weeks and it's a pretty, um, different kind of uh, order of magnitude because we've grown to about 150 people now. And so uh, we were also in the same boat of moving um, offices. You know, we were in that really tiny place in Inglewood and we still actually have like our met lab and some of the welding cells there, but we're moving to a huge building in Long Beach. And so, you know, in order to make sure that we get all the permitting done and everything like that, we're moving slowly bits and pieces, but we're, we're getting more like the infrastructure, the concrete pad laid, um, we're moving Stargate, which will be the huge, big Stargate, as far as I know. I think it will be the world's biggest vertical 3D printer, definitely, that we're going to use to print um, the wow. second stage and a fairing of like 25 foot tall. So all that has taken place with minimum amount of people on site and using contractors. And they've all been, you know, wearing masks and, you know, washing their hands and doing all that very, very safely. So like Melanie said, Monday uh, the 18th is the date that we sort of targeted for also California soft opening and trying to bring more people back to the welding cells in Inglewood as well. Um, and so for that, I also have been making face coverings, but not, nothing to do with the medical face coverings, just the, the cloth masks. And so uh, I've made almost like a hundred now, but, um, and they are beautiful. Oh, wow. Well, uh, <laughs> very, <laughs> very nice. Um, <laughs> I was, some have gone down to our test stand people in um, Stennis, Mississippi, and some are in Long Beach, and then some are in um, Inglewood. And there's also another person, one of my co-workers, has also volunteered her time to sew. So honestly, the, the cloth masks that I've been making have been from things like old T-shirts, um, <laughs> you know, bananas. But the ones that I've been sewing have been brand new from, um, I happen to have a sewing machine and basic rudimentary sewing skills. So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been like cranking them out. So, um, you know, first I started with material that I just had on hand and people weren't really keen on like the Hawaiian flowers. So I got different patterns. I got camo and I got like uh, spaceships and I got little stars and stripes for Memorial Day. So <laughs> hopefully people find those a little bit like a bit more of a variety and gives people something to talk about when, you know, they're, they're not thinking terribly about, oh no, I have to wear a face mask, but now they can have some fun with it too. Yeah, that's awesome. How are we doing on time, Ellie? Oh, we have like nine minutes left. So ah. maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe Lindsay, you want to tell us about your plans for um, trying to get to the new normal, as you want to call it? You know, I would say that, you know, all the things we talked about, masks, distancing, are, we're all in play and, and we're, we've rearranged our shipping. Um, so we've revised some shipping protocols. We're doing all contact shipping protocols. Um, but 
I'm still thinking through it. I'm still, I still need to think about contingency plans. You know, if, if mm -hmm. we have somebody come down with the, uh, illness or, um, and I'm all, I'm in a smaller space as well. So another thing I've been looking at is looking at a building, uh, separate buildings and we've siloed um, some of our fabrication departments so that everybody's um, a little bit more isolated. Um, but way, you know, in the cost of that and um, just keeping people safe has really been my top, my top concern and, 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 get, and putting them back to work, you know, and, and getting back to work and, and safely. So I'm still negotiating, I'm negotiating it now. I have to, I think we all have to be agile right now um, in, the, in all regards, right? In our strat, our business strategy, our reopening, our, how we, how our business is functioning. Um, so it's been helpful to talk to other people, like I, you know, hear about other people's plans and, and great ideas. I, you know, I think Melanie, I don't, you didn't mention it, but you were telling me how you, you know, you reduced all the high traffic touch points in your office, which is not something I had thought about at that, you mm -hmm. know, at that level. Um, so uh, it's, it's good for us to all be talking about it and, and I've been reaching out to, you know, the chamber and obviously Orange County's health department as well for guidelines. But, you know, you really have to think about your business and how it operates and, and the individual needs of what your business does and, and how they, um, how you can keep them safe. Because I don't think it's a one size fits all, right, for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so just a lot of that. But I have been missing everyone in our community and really missing all the fun times and networks and, and conversations that we've been having with all the incredible people here in LA. And I was thinking we should have a live meeting um, panel session. So that way everyone could join. We could see some friendly faces, get a crowd. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Have you, what have you, what's, what's, I mean, is that on every, I mean, I know it's on my mind, bringing people back to work and, and being safe. Um, what are some of the other things you guys are hearing in the industry about events, topics? Yeah. Events, especially this week, I feel like I've been in like 100% event mode. Um, mm. because We would normally, of course, be doing trade shows mm -hmm. and have booths at trade shows. Um, so a lot of them have moved online and I've attended a couple that have been using some really interesting platforms um, where they have little networking tables where you have breakout sessions in addition to um, the main stage. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, to the event, uh, the medical uh, uh, additive event that uh, ASME is going to be doing soon. Um, it looks like they've got some really interesting stuff for virtual booths. Mm -hmm. And um, just mm -hmm. kind of looking at how we can move our messaging and our marketing um, for our products that we that we sell um, and our value proposition and case studies um, and all those things and move those online and make it effective. Because I think that that's one thing, you know, when we talk about getting back to work, um, I think that our, our marketing and our messaging strategy is going to be different. Um, like many, you know, during, during these past eight weeks, um, there've been a lot of, from Matter Hacker's perspective anyway, with, you know, us selling 3D printers and materials, a lot of the interest that we've gotten over the last eight weeks has been from people that are new that, that want their first 3D printer because they really wanted to contribute to the, um, to the COVID response of the 3D printing community, which is wonderful. Um, and now we're starting to get back to our, you know, what normal business conversations as far as um, businesses that are coming back to work, um, jigs, fixtures, tools, you know, um, all of that sort of thing. And I think we may start to see a sort of hybrid of people that, you know, are interested in everything that they've heard about additive manufacturing in the last few weeks with how in the spotlight additive has been. Um, and looking at how they can keep their businesses relevant um, and either bring on 3D printing and additive manufacturing or um, look at what new materials are available, what new technology is available so that they can sort of, you know, start to future proof their businesses and bring this stuff in house um, so that they can participate in if there's another national, you know, pandemic emergency that 3D printing can assist with, great. 
but also starting to think about what if that in what if that emergency is actually just internal and you need to pivot like we've seen all of these um, companies be able to pivot what it is that they're manufacturing in-house into something that addresses a real need um, and a short-term need and a need that needs to be addressed very quickly. Um, so all of those, you know, looking at how we're going to each um, address those sorts of conversations, I think is where it's going to start to get very, very interesting. What are you guys seeing with that? I, I, yeah, I totally, I agree so much. Melanie, how have you had to change in that same respect? How have you had to kind of change your strategy? What are you working on to pivot yeah, so, in this time? Yeah, we, we have seen, uh, strangely enough, a large uptake, uh, uptick in, you know, inquiries and business just over the past week or so. I think that's representative of people, you know, getting back to work, coming out of, you know, hiding and um, ready to get going again. Um, we did see a slowdown and then it picked back up. But what we're what we're thinking of in terms of, you know, shifting strategy is that um, we are getting more requests for us to do R and D projects or feasibility projects than we are necessarily for equipment sales because, you know, as an OEM, that's our primary business is to get machines in the field. Um, but we do offer R&D services as well, and so we are expanding our internal capability to do R&D, uh, which will be threefold by the end of the year. And, um, you know, that will allow us to do more because we just see such a large influx, especially recently coming in. And, you know, customers might be, have tighter budgets. They might not be able to bring in their capital equipment as they wanted to. Right. And so they might need to rely on, you know, people like us or others to do some of those services for them. Um, until they're able to get their capital equipment budgets or, or grants back again. Hmm. That's a good yeah, point. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think that's also interesting. Um, from my side, I've seen um, all the conferences and meetings that would t usually happen around this time and then going into September, they were all being canceled. And so, mm -hmm. because and nobody you did knows. a lot of that, you, you were all, you're out speaking like, a lot that you're I out gathering learned. information. And yeah. I was like, now I've got like zero. So, and then I submitted <laughs> abstracts and papers and now they're all like, well, we don't know what's happening with these. So I'm like, ah, okay. But then people are also, like you said, moving into the digital space and then go and doing webinars and, and meetings and so on. So I think that's totally a way to connect with people in our community. And yeah, just highlight, throw, mm -hmm. throw a spotlight on all the work that um, 3D printing is doing for the COVID response. You know, obviously we've seen Matter Hackers, you guys have been amazing about what, yeah. what you guys have been doing and giving back to the community. So yeah. you should um, uh, slap yourself on the back for that. But we should also think about, you know, the wider 3D printing community. We need to reconnect with everybody. And so I'm really looking forward to having like a live Zoom with you guys. I think, I think Lindsay, if we can start talking and organizing that, that would be super yes. awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, it's good to see you. On a, just a final note, did anybody catch the Thunderbirds flyover of our region today? Did you guys oh, see it? I was oh, I missed it. I'm up oh. in the valley. I'm in Studio City, so... So you didn't get the flyby. Mm -mm. Um, okay. Was it good? I yes. You know the Thunderbirds. I are local here, and our office is right here at the shoreline. So we get to see them practice before they do the big air show in Huntington Beach, which is a huge air show. Um, so they f they flew pretty low. I made a point to kind of go outside and wait because you know I'm I, I love that stuff. So it was really really nice, and I hope all of our first responders and healthcare workers were able to get a glimpse and and had a good day today. Yeah, yeah I was out. I'm actually heading from here to uh, down closer to you guys to uh, Torrance um, to drop off some some 3D printed PPE where it is still needed. Um, but yesterday we did a little caravan of thanks um, with the fire department and police department um, to a couple of the hospitals in the South Bay um, where we had dropped off uh, 3D printed PPE previously. And, um, and it was really, it was so interesting to be a part of something where like the, the fire department and the police department were there to thank the healthcare workers. And then the healthcare workers were thanking the fire department and the police department. Um, and it was just an amazing thing to see how, you know, in a terrible, terrible situation, communities have really 
pulled together. And I know that we see a lot of divisiveness out there, um, but if you really pay attention, you find the 3D printing community and the additive community and the technology community and the education community, the healthcare workers, the first responders, and the people that support them are all really trying to do what they can to make a difference. So it's, um, and you know, they say that, uh, that it's in historically after pandemics, um, you get a surge of creativity um, and a bit of a renaissance. So I, I'm really interested in, you know, keeping in touch with everybody and working together to really make that happen and focus on the good. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Absolutely. Okay, well, guys, well, thanks, you know, Ellie. it was so great to see you. I miss you so much. <laughs> great to see you, too. Next it's time, so we're all going to have those I Love 3D Printing shirts. No joke. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will get them out to you. I will. I did get my Women in 3D Printing shirt I'm wearing, and I don't think you can see it, but... Um, um, in a booster, a booster. I know. i got to sit up a little taller in my right. desk. <laughs> okay, right, bye now. Thank bye you so much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.